Welcome back from that commercial break. And you're watching Health Pod. Remember, this is a program brought to you by Makere University School of Public Health. And we are delighted to have Professor Peter Waiswa taking us through the general overview of this whole program. And you need this overview. And uh, Professor, before we went for the commercial break, you had talked about one of the aspects, or one of the programs that we are actually handling uh, when it comes to health port. And you were taking us through the second now aspect uh, under health port. So what is this second aspect that we are looking at under health port? So having done the first important part, which is early child development yeah. and nutrition, which we'll be talking about uh, a lot. We also, as a university, we do a lot of research and uh, we are funded by the government and donors. We would like this evidence to bring it from the ivory tower so that the people from, which, from whom we get the evidence also get it back. So we want the research that we do in Makerele, especially in health, to bring it here through from the TV so that people get to know about it. We are a country which would like to use science to drive development. And we don't want that research that we do to just remain in those books. We like to bring it in simple ways so that the public gets to know about it and use some of that evidence in the development of the country. Okay. So um, after, after early childhood, uh, because you told us about um, the aspects that we are looking at under child, uh, early childhood development and among those is nutrition, education, and then you also talked about something important, uh, coordinating the family and the community uh, when it comes to the child upbringing. Uh, how is this going to happen? So, well, it is not necessarily our responsibility as market to make sure it happens. We would like to give you information what is the right thing to do so that the duty bearers are able to implement it. So the ideal situation, uh, even from our history, is that a child grows up in a community, not just in a family, but also interacts with the community. I'll give you an example. If, for instance, you have a teenager and you talk to her so much about sexuality, preventing pregnancy and stuff like that, but you don't bring the community on board. It might be actually a neighbor or somebody else who is doing the harm and the, the other neighbors can just walk on. That's why we need the family to be in the community and all to be working together. A second thing is that um, we have leaders. Leaders have to be to ensure that the community in which the child grows is a good environment for children to grow in. There are no people who abuse, uh, who do sexual abuse of children, who injure children, who give them drugs and stuff like that. Uh, but also there are other things like our schools safe. Are, are they okay? Our roads okay? Are children safe to, uh, walking to within the community? Do they have places they can play? Remember, if you are staying on uh, the third floor of an apartment and there is no place to, to play, where does this child do the, all the games? <laughs> Just in the apartment? So all the, that's why the, the family and the community and the society are interconnected in bringing up an upright human being. So we would like to emphasize that bringing up the child is not just the responsibility of the mother. It is also the father, other people in the family, but also the community and society and actually uh, government. So uh, doctor, you also, uh, you also talked about maternal health and early childhood development. So when we talk about maternal, maternal health, basically, fathers or husbands tend to neglect all this. For instance, when it comes to antenatal care, you know, uh, all that process. And then child upbringing, that is now the early childhood. All these responsibilities tend to be left for mothers. 
thinking that is, it is the responsibility of the mothers and probably the maids only. So should we expect that um, the father, uh, fathers are also part of this and they shouldn't miss this program? We actually want to do a major emphasis on men because the women are already doing a big job. They just need a few tips and to be enabled by the men, but men have a major responsibility. So in this program we'll be discussing what can a father do? What does a responsible father do? Uh, how does, uh, also give some skills to the father on the things he can do, but also the things he should not do, <laughs> you know? So uh, fathers are welcome to watch this program and we are going to be empowering you to make sure that uh, you are a responsible father. These fathers are also important because they are also the ones in positions of responsibility. They make a lot of the decisions and they, they need to know. So we actually even expect the big fathers, like uh, members of parliament, even the president and others to know you want uh, a future for society. But then what must be done early on in life? What we can, how can we support families? How can we make sure that the policies are right, that uh, the environment is right, and there is adequate support to make sure that we have a proper future of, uh, of a country through this early child uh, development and uh, nutrition. In fact, right now, and I'm happy that I'm um, uh, a member of the WHO uh, independent experts. We have said that we need to go beyond zero to five. We need to go zero to 18 or even 19. What do you mean by we need to go beyond zero? Uh, we need to go from zero to five to zero to 18. So we, you see that most of the programs are focused on, um, on children like immunization, like bed nets, and after 5 to 18 years, there is almost no program that is focusing. So we target early and we reduce the death of those children, but they start as a risk. So what, and here after 5, many children are going to school. So what is the environment they are going in? They are also interacting with the environment. So they are in, in that, we don't want kids who are taking drugs, we don't want kids who are sexually abused. We don't want kids who are injured uh, through accidents. Injuries are the leading cause of death after five to 18 years within that period. So that's why now we are thinking that for early child development and nutrition is being pushed all the way, that we need to look at the health of the child from before conception, before the child is made, up to 18 years before they become adults. So all this period, the country will need to do programs. And for us here in Makiri, we are here to provide that evidence of what needs to be done, what changes are needed to be done, what policies are needed, what capacity building is needed. OK. So um, which audience, uh, besides the mothers, our, the, the pregnant mothers and the husbands, which other audience should we, should we um, should we call upon to watch this program? So these days, in fact, for early child development and the nutrition is uh, in the government is coordinated through the Ministry of Gender. Because we know that it is beyond just health. It is across the whole of government. Uh, you could just say like now COVID, it is across the whole of government. The primary audience are mother and father. Yeah. But the leaders are important, but this program is actually for everybody in the country. I mean, if you are interested in the future of Uganda, then you should be interested how does it start and prepare for it. You might be a financial, you might be a journalist, you might be a politician, you might be a doctor, you might be a teacher, you might actually be a child activist, you might be an NGO. This program is for you. Okay. So, um, Doctor, as, as we are finalizing, actually, um, because so far, 
we have looked at what we call nutrition uh, in preconception and nutrition during pregnancy. And we have partly uh, introduced antenatal. Actually, um, we've looked at part of antenatal care, but um, we still ask ourselves, why is it that the fathers are so redundant, are so lazy when it comes to taking up their responsibility? And uh, uh, like you said earlier, that you're emphasizing, you're emphasizing uh, the, the role of husbands. And well, for, what, for the little we've looked at, or for the little we've handled in health port, we've realized that the role of the fathers is actually bigger than expected or than imagined, but the fathers are still lazy. Now, I, I, I kind of request you that you re-emphasize the role of husbands when it comes to all this process. Uh, when, when we talk about maternal and early childhood development, you re-emphasize it, though you had talked about it earlier, but re-emphasize it. So actually, as I said, the mothers are already doing a fairly good job. We just need a few tips and support to complete. Now, it will be easier for these mothers to do their job if the fathers know what to do, and they are doing it. And I don't, not just the fathers, it is the fathers-to-be, and then the husbands, and then later who become fathers, and uh, are important. And I, I'm actually going back to my colleague at the school. I think we should design a course for empowering fathers so that they have somewhere they can go and be able to learn what is responsible fatherhood and how do you do it. Fathers, it should not just stop on giving money to bring things in the home. That is an important job. But a good father who is involved in the development of the child, not just in the making of the child, but in the development, is going to be important. Fathers who support the mother, fathers who don't harm, fathers who don't give things which are not important for the child or contradict, but also fathers who support the woman to be able to function, but also fathers who help out in caring for the baby, but also in stimulating the baby, educating the baby, feeding the baby and the child, and when they grow up, fathers who engage the children to make sure that they are, we prepare them for the future that they need. It goes beyond paying school fees, it goes beyond buying food, it goes beyond providing housing. Okay. So, Doctor, uh, still, uh, we have a tendency, especially in, in, in most of uh, these African countries, specifically Uganda, where mothers, instead of going to health facilities to, 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 get, um, to get professional attention, they go to these traditional birth attendants. And we've realized that this is part of the reasons as to why uh, the, 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 the birth rate, that, sorry, the death rate, the um, death rate is actually increasing, especially to the mothers and the newly born babies. Um, I would like also, I would call upon you to emphasize the, the, the importance of getting information from skilled people, from professional people, and not these traditional birth attendants. So, as I said before, the course, I mean, this program is going to cover the right things to do and how to do it before you become pregnant. When you are pregnant, like, what type, what care in terms of what you care you need. Uh, in terms of delivering, how do you prepare for it? Where do you deliver from? <laughs> what should you know about uh, going to deliver? And what are your rights? and what are the expectations, and the, the things you must not do, like delivering a traditional birth attendant. But even when you deliver in a hospital, it should be uh, from a skilled person who has equipment, and it should be a safe place with quality. Okay, thank you so much, Professor Peter Weiswa. Today, we have been looking at the general overview of this whole program, Health Port, and I believe 
the professor has actually elaborated it in detail and all the questions must be answered. But of course, you shouldn't miss every single episode. Remember, it is airing every Friday at exactly 7 p.m. So you shouldn't miss this program. Edwin Austin Mukalazi is my name. Fatina is our sign language interpreter. And of course, we had Dr. Professor Peter Waiswa taking us through the journal overview. But of course, I've worked with Jonah Jal, the producer, and I work with Tony Santo on social media. I also work with Bantam in transmission. Good night. Enjoy your weekend responsibly, and God bless you. Thank you.